Hello and welcome back to the Final Studio tutorial and in this video I'm going to be going over the game settings and studio settings. Now these aren't typically necessary to know but I just want to go through them just for sake of getting through them and knowing that you guys know that they are there and they exist as well as what you can do with them. Now the first thing we want to get into is the game settings and you can find the button for this in the home tab that we went over in previous videos and it will be all the way to the right on that tab. So the first thing you'll see is your basic info for your game. This will include your name, description, game icons, screenshots and videos, up to 10 of these, your genre and devices that are playable for your game. So you can have one selected where it's only a computer or all of them, whatever you choose to have. This will allow you to change its playability to this will allow you to change its playability, so it could be only for friends, anyone on Roblox, or only developers. You will also be able to see the game owner, which is most likely going to be you, and you can also add other teammates and members if you're using Team Create. I'll go through this real quick just so you guys know how to do this. So just like in the last video, we'll go to the View tab, and then we'll go to Team Create, turn this on when it shows up. And now that we're in Team Create, all of your stuff will load and you can go to your game settings now. And if you go to permissions, you will now have the option to search by username and add collaborators. So let's say I wanted to add Frank to my game. Now I could add anyone of this list or the specific username I input to be a developer on the game. Like last video, you can go down here to the three dots and now disable Team Create and it will load you back into the regular studio. The next one is monetization and this will allow you to change your game's paid access and private server prices and if those things are on. A note to make on these is that you can only have one active at a time. You can't have both paid access and private servers running. You can only have paid access or private servers. You can also create developer products that can be purchased in your game. The next one is security and this provides you with four options to choose from and turn each of those on or off. The first one is the allow HTTP requests and this will determine if your game server can issue requests to a remote server. The next one is enable studio access to API services and as it says here, it enables studio access to game surface services such as a data stores. If you're a programmer and you're doing data stores, you probably want to turn this on. Allowing third party sales will allow players to purchase items provided by third parties. The last one is allow third party teleports and this will allow you to teleport to other people's games and also places inside of your game. We'll get to that later. It's this tab right down here under localization. Localization allows you to change the source language, which is the language your game is written in. Automatic text capture will allow you to automatically capture text from a game UI when players are playing. And the last one is use translated content and this will allow you to enable translated content. So if you translate Spanish to English or English to German or English to Spanish, any of this, it'll allow people to see that translated content. This down here, I clicked on it before and it gave me an error. So based on what it says, it just allows you to manage cloud localization, but I don't know how you get permission for that. It gave me an error. I don't know if it gives anyone else errors. If you would like to let me know why it does that, then uh, that'd be greatly helpful. The next one is places, and this will allow you to create quote unquote sub places of this game and you can have places that are essentially linked to this game and you can teleport to them. The next one is avatar and this will allow you to choose from a set of presets for your avatar choice and what avatars will be used in the game. You can change and override the avatar type for your game, the animation as well as the collision. You can also override the scale of the characters, like their head size, body type, proportions, etc. Same thing with their face, head, torso, left arm. You can change the figure of their avatar, essentially, sort of like pa how packages work. You can do the same with clothing, as long as you just enter the ID in down here. 
The world section will allow you to change the world itself, such as gravity, jump height, walk speed, and slope angles. There are presets up here that you can choose from that will allow you to be like that sort of genre. So realistic will be like the real world and get something close to a real world test with a gravity set. The last one is options and this will allow you to turn on or off collaborative editing and that is for scripts if uh, multiple people can work on a script at the same time though that can probably get messy if people are typing in it at the same time and things probably won't go as you want it to unless people are working in different sections. And the last thing is shutting down all servers. That's if you want to and you're updating your game or something like that or you just want to shut it down and flush out your servers. But I, I don't think that's a good idea if you have a, a, a large amount of players playing. So that finishes it for the game settings. One tip I want to mention is that you can find the game settings in the file menu just above studio settings. And as we get into studio settings, I'd like to mention that as you can see here, there is a shortcut for it and that is Alt S. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see in the bottom left, boom, shortcut. And it opens up to this UI that we can see and see all of our studio settings. Now there is a ton of stuff in here. So I'm just going to do a summary of what each one is. So as I said, starting with the first one, we're going to go over studio. Now with camera, you can change your camera and its speeds and zoom function. With directories, you can change where your files, plugins and assets go and are saved to. In general, you can save and change the theme, rendering, language, display mode, and you can decide if script changes will always save. This means any, any edits you make, even mistakes, would get saved. With tools, you can change if hover and select boxes are showing, and you can also change their colors as well as the speed of transition from one color to the next when hovering. The script editor, you can change fonts of your code, tab width, and extra shortcuts slash add-ons. With auto recovery, you can change where auto saved files are and if it's enabled, as well as how often they will happen. For example, every five minutes they will be auto saved. I'm also pretty sure that's the default, how it's default set. The next one is script editor colors and in here you can change the color of your script editor and the code itself such as things like the script background, text color, or error colors. With the output, you can change the output layout if it's cleared and nothing is in it on start, the font of the text in it, and how many lines can be output onto it. For example, the beginning or starter or default is 5000. The next is debugger, and in here you can change if Lua debugger is enabled, edit the command bar, and also change script timeout lengths. In browsing, you can choose if deprecated objects are shown and the permission at which it's shown. It's shown. In advance, you can change if diagnostics bars are showing, if you can move multiple parts as a single part, and if the output will show you QT warnings. With primary part, you can change the hover color and the line thickness of the primary part. This will help you better identify what is the primary part of a uh, set. In audio, you can change the behavior of server audio, like if it's muted, etc., as well as if it's only playing from the current window. In the undo section, you can change your runtime undo behavior, and the default you'll have it set to is aggregate. In explorer, you can show certain things like the plus when hovering over things in explorer, hidden objects, and core and plugin GUI services. I'm going to show you what I mean by that plus, so I'm going to exit out of here and when you hover over any of these it shows a plus and this is uh, will allow you to uh, insert objects. The next one is visualization and this will allow you to decide if navigation meshes will be shown and if decomposition geometry will show. When I talk about decomposition geometry this will change how your mesh looks and it'll show almost all of the triangles and I think it does this by changing the colors of each of the sides based on its angle I'm not sure but there are forum posts about it you can check that on developer forum the next tab is game settings or game options and as you can see there's not as many the following 
six are also very short, so you should go pretty quick. In game settings, you're greeted with online, and in here you can change your team create chat history as well as report abuse chat history. This will show in team create chat. And then with video, you can change your video recording quality as well as if you can video capture. For example, the automatic shortcut is F12 currently, and you could disable that and you wouldn't have the ability to press F12 and record. The next one is the Lua section. Here you can see diagnostics and online. In diagnostics, you can change the default wait time for scripts. And in online, you can enable slash disable if script starts are reported and also change the waiting threads budget. The next is diagnostics. In performance, you can look at your game performance. In errors, you can change if sound warnings are reported and if script stack tracing is enabled. In profile, you can see your Roblox version, studio version. And in bench benchmarking, you can change your tick count override. Next is physics. In performance, you can turn on or off whether you allow sleeping. You can also change if environmental throttle is on as well as throttle adjust time. In display, you can change if you see certain physics constraints and other things. Next is network. With appearance, you can change if streamed regions are rendered and in diagnostics, you can change the tracking of data in physics and print specific diagnostics. Finally, oh, not finally. Second to last is rendering. And in the performance section, you can change regular quality and edit quality levels when rendering in studio, as well as turn on or off eager bulk execution. In debug, you can change the level of detail for meshes, if you can see CSG triangles and they are rendered, if bounding boxes are gonna be shown, and you can also change the auto FRM level and reload assets can be turned on or off. In the general section, you can change the graphics mode and frame rate manager settings, as well as export merging based on materials. In cache, you can change the mesh cache size. Finally is task scheduler, and in diagnostics here, you can view thread pool size, scheduler rate, and scheduler duty cycle. In configuration, you can change thread pool configuration settings. And then finally, you can change thread pool configuration settings in the configuration section. All right, so that's going to finish it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. We went through game and studio settings in this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something like I just said, and we are probably going to be using some of this in the future. Now that the three, these three basic parts are done, now that these three basic parts are done, we can get into actually creating things, which is probably going to be a lot more fun. It's going to be a lot more informative and it's going to be a lot more realistic. It's going to be actual work. If this did help you. So if you guys enjoyed or you learned something new today, I would really appreciate it if you smashed the subscribe button and also annihilated the like button. That helps me get noticed and makes my videos spread out more. Especially if you think this was a quality video, do just that. Spread this and share this with other people, please. Please do so. It'll, it'll help me greatly more than liking and subscribing. Sharing is the ultimate best thing. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video or tutorial. See ya.